Hey guys, welcome to my garden. Today I'm going to continue my series on native plants for the home garden. If you missed my first video on why planting native plants in your yard is important, I will link that below. That's a good place to start. Otherwise, today we're going to take a look at two more plants. We're gonna check out milkweed and bee balm. Those are both in bloom in my yard right now. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around. We'll go check those out. And, um, you know, as we're going along, if you have any questions about anything you see or anything I've talked about, please go ahead and comment below and I will try to uh, answer any questions you have. All right, let's turn the camera around and check out milkweed and bee balm. We're going to go take a look at the bee balm first. I'm growing two different varieties of bee balm this year. So I just picked this up this spring. So this is new. Um, so this is what the bee balm flower looks like. Bee balm is, it's also referred to as Monarda, um, and there are several different varieties native um, across the continent. Um, and if you look at the shape of the flower, you can see that it's a, a tubular shape. And this type of flower is preferred by butterflies and hummingbirds and some bees um, because they have the long tongues or appendages to be able to get into the flower and get to the nectar. So this is where having a variety of flower shapes can be really important in the home garden to help out uh, wildlife. So this variety is called raspberry wine and this can take full sun to part shade and it blooms summer to fall let's see so this is a pretty tough plant and this one is tall. This is like three and a half feet tall right now. Other varieties are shorter. So you can kind of find a variety that works for your circumstances in your yard. But I love this because the leaves actually turn as the flower starts to bloom the leaves are turning this really rich burgundy color. And I have never seen that before, so I thought that was awesome. So they start off green. And you can see it's starting to turn purple. The other interesting thing about bee balm is that the leaves are very fragrant. Uh, the leaves are actually more fragrant than the flower itself. And I read that um, the leaves have been used in teas and um, sort to flavor things. I've never done that. I don't know if that's advisable or not. Uh, but that is something that I read. So, this one's a little bit shorter. I think uh, it broke off. And so that's another thing to note is that if you want it to be shorter and bushier, you can actually cut it, you know, to the height you'd like. Like if I cut this off here, it would start growing from here. So I'd have more blooms and a bushier plant. But I wanted to keep it taller 
so that I can see this from my porch and hopefully I will be able to see some hummingbirds and butterflies over here. So I have another variety in my front flower bed that is shorter. So let's go take a look at that. And then we'll check out the milkweed. Okay. So this is the other variety of bee balm I have. This is much shorter. This only gets about two feet high. And these flowers are a really bright pink. These actually started blooming before the other variety and you can see they're starting to dry up a little bit. So what I plan on doing is once these blooms dry up, I'm gonna cut it and hopefully get another uh, flush of blooms. And you can see, well, I don't know if you could see, but there are tiny little bees so I don't usually see bumblebees at the bee balm. I see smaller bees and hummingbirds and butterflies. So again, it's important to have a variety of native flower shapes so that all of the native pollinators can benefit. And actually, I'm probably in the fall going to divide these. I planted these a couple years ago and it looks like they're starting to grow out of the space. So I will probably divide them and plant them in other areas of the garden. There's some little bees there. I, I don't know if you can see them or not. So next I'm going to show you milkweed, which is probably one of the most important pollinator plants we can grow in our yards because monarch butterflies rely on milkweed to lay their eggs because the monarch caterpillars can only eat milkweed leaves. They cannot eat any other type of plant. So this is the only plant that monarch butterflies can lay eggs on. Um, so as you can see, I have quite a bit of milkweed. This is common milkweed. There are many different varieties of milkweed native to different parts of the US or North America. Um, monarchs use all of them. There are just some varieties that are better for, you know, if you have a, a wetter climate um, or a, you live in a drier climate. Um, the common milkweed is does really well um, in the dry prairie type environment so and it's really tall some of the other varieties are shorter so and you can utilize milkweed in a lot of different ways I um, just kind of let it come up in my flower garden but you can even just dedicate a patch of yard you know a square of lawn to just growing milkweed. Um, so you can see this is probably four feet tall and it has huge leaves. And then we get these big clusters of flowers that bloom. And these are really interesting flowers. They smell, they're super sweet 
and I see all kinds of pollinators. I see bees on these, butterflies, uh, a little bit of everything. The other fun thing about milkweed is this, you can use it um, if you have kids. It's a really good educational experience because it will attract monarch butterflies to your yard. And it's amazing how quickly they find the milkweed plants. And then if you can, you know, spot the eggs and caterpillars, you can watch them grow. Oh, there's a bee. So it's fun to watch this, you know, very, very tiny caterpillar grow into this huge caterpillar and then eventually um, become a butterfly. But this is so important because monarchs are becoming endangered and, um, you know, this is something we can all do. It's, this plant is so tough. I don't water it, I don't fertilize it, you know, it's meant to be here, so it takes care of itself. Um, and it's, it's so easy to grow. And one of the ways I try to find caterpillars is if you look at the leaves and you look for the tiny holes, that is evidence that there's been a caterpillar nibbling. That's how I tend to find them. Nope. 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 There's an egg. That little white spot. That's a monarch egg, so that will turn into a caterpillar. see any caterpillars right now. Um, they are really good at hiding in plain sight too, so sometimes I just completely overlook them. Oh, here's one. This one is super tiny. I don't even know if you can see it. So they grow from that to a few inches long. They get pretty big before they um, turn into butterflies. The other important thing to consider is if you decide to grow milkweed, which I think everybody should, um, growing other flowers because the adult butterflies still need nectar from flowers. So baby monarchs eat uh, milkweed leaves, but the butterflies eat nectar from flowers. So planting something like bee balm alongside the milkweed can be really helpful for them. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about milkweed or bee balm or anything else you noticed in the video, I know I have a lot of different plants around, so if you saw something you have a question about, feel free to 
pop a comment below. If you want to see more videos on how I'm using native plants in the garden or garden tours, feel free to like and subscribe so you don't miss those. Um, otherwise, I hope you have a good rest of the day and I hope this inspires you to plant some natives in your own yard. This is something we can all do to really help the environment. So I hope this gave you some ideas. All right, see you next time.